So this is the chip that will power flagship smartphones in 2022. Let me take another reading. Yep. Looks like some things just never change. What we have today is the Motorola Moto X30. It's the world's first commercially available smartphone powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But before we go into this, let's take a moment to learn what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 has to offer. We all know the 8 series is Snapdragon's most powerful avatar that powers the most expensive Android smartphones of the day. And apart from a really confusing change in name, there's a lot that has changed inside. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is made on Samsung's 4 nanometer manufacturing process, promising better power efficiency. But more importantly, next year's flagship chipset unlocks the performance gains from the ARM V9 instruction set. It's got new cores in the same tri-cluster arrangement, a big Cortex-X2 core clocked at 3 GHz for the really intensive tasks followed by three Cortex-A710 mid-cores clocked at 2.5 GHz to compute semi-intensive tasks and four Cortex-A510 cores clocked at 1.8 GHz for everything else. There's also a new GPU that Qualcomm now simply calls Adreno, no number after it to denote generational shifts, but it now supports more advanced rendering features like variable rate shading, 10-bit HDR gaming, 144fps gameplay and more. Qualcomm promises a 30% gain in GPU performance and 20% improvement in CPU performance followed by a 30% reduction in power intake. So a new manufacturing process, a new instruction set and well, a new name too. So just how good can the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 be? Hi, I'm Shubhajit, you're watching My Smart Price. let's get raging. We tested the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 on the Moto X30 with a series of synthetic benchmark tests and stress tests along with some real-world usage. I had the Vivo X70 Pro Plus running on the Snapdragon 888 Plus for comparison. But the thing to note here is the Moto X30 is a rushed device. It doesn't fully explore the capabilities of the brand new chip. Things like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1's always on camera isn't put to use and you can't even shoot 1080p videos at 60 frames per second from the camera. But we're not going into how good the Motorola X30 really is. That's for if and when the smartphone actually launches in India. Our sole focus in this video today is the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Our first test is the Antutu 2 benchmark. We ran it thrice to see how the scores average out and while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 almost touches the 1 million score mark, its average score was just 12% better than the Snapdragon 888 Plus. The breakdown of the total score reveals the GPU creates a bigger difference than the CPU on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Next up is the Geekbench 5 CPU test. I feel this test isn't optimized for the ARM V9 architecture yet, as the chipset info it shows is of ARM V8, but we ran it thrice regardless, and the results were a tad disappointing for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. After three runs, the average single core and multi core scores were almost similar to that of the Snapdragon 888 Plus. There's something probably wrong with this test, and we're gonna wait for Geekbench 6 to validate our results. Moving on, we're going to put the Moto X30 through the mighty 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. This test gives us a good idea of both the chipset's graphical prowess and its thermal capacities. And this is where the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 shines. It scores a whooping 41% higher than the Snapdragon 888 Plus, but more importantly, it maintains a good 70% stability after 20 runs of the same test. Unfortunately, there's a cost to this stability. The Moto X30 hit temperatures above 50 degrees during the course of this test, indicating Snapdragon's heating issues is here to stay. The last test among the synthetic benchmarks is the CPU throttling test. The app keeps the CPU engaged for 30 minutes with complex computations to see whether it can sustain the high performance it's designed for for that long. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 throttled to 80% of its max performance after 30 minutes of this test running, while the Snapdragon 888 Plus throttled to only 85% of its max performance. So far, the synthetic benchmarks proved a little unimpressive for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but synthetic benchmarks don't always hold true in the real world. Here, the Moto X30 actually feels pretty smooth paired to the 144Hz AMOLED display along with LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. It feels just as fast as the fastest flagship out there in regular use and Android 12 feels nice and smooth on this phone. But for a true taste of the real world, we played a few games. First up, BGMI. The Moto X30 can run it at UHD graphics with ultra FPS maxing out the game's graphics. The game ran smooth with no stutters whatsoever, clocking what I felt was 60 FPS proper. 
Next up, COD Mobile. Here, the Moto X30 can hit very high graphics with max FPS, same as the Vivo X70 Pro Plus on Snapdragon 888 Plus. But here too, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 handled the game pretty well, offering 60 frames per second gameplay with everything maxed out. Just look how smooth the game is running. Finally, there's Genshin Impact, a really intensive mobile game that puts flagship GPUs to good use. And here too, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performs really well. It maxes out the graphics in the game, offering super smooth frame rates with no stutter whatsoever. And in fact, all the games that we tested ran with everything maxed out. But of course, that's expected since this is the best at present, but more importantly, the heating. Yes, it exists even in real world tests. The phone did heat up quite a bit while playing Genshin Impact, but not so much during BGMI and COD Mobile. Having said that, it didn't heat up as much as it did when the synthetic benchmarks were running. Now summing it up, the Moto X30 gives a disappointing first impressions of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But like I said before, this could very well be the fault of the the phone itself and not necessarily the chipset. The phone feels like a rush product with Motorola hardly taking any advantage of all the varied capabilities that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 comes with. Still, the CPU performance is nothing much to boast about, but frankly, at the top end, there's really no app or game that can really take advantage and put the CPU into stress. What's important is the gains that the GPU makes in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that translates beautifully into high octane gaming. So if not for anything else, you should be ruling over flagship smartphones in 2022 purely for the gaming performance that they offer. So that brings us to the end of this video. Let us know what you thought of the Moto X30 and more importantly, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you are notified every time we push out an awesome new tech video and share this video with as many friends as you can so that it signals the YouTube algorithm to propel this video up top. I'm going to catch you in another video soon. Till then, take care.